Up to 300 people gathered outside the Doyle for a vigil organised by the pro-life campaign. Campaigners say they want to show solidarity with the young woman who says she requested an abortion after being raped but later gave birth to a baby by caesarean section at around 25 weeks. A fund has been set up to help care for the baby involved. Our reporter Sharon Gaffney is in Kildare Street and joins us now. Sharon. Well, Gardaí say between two and 300 people were here outside Leinster House for tonight's vigil. Speakers for the pro-life campaign were critical of the government's abortion legislation, which they said wasn't evidence-based. They said it dehumanised unborn children, and they also said it put the lives of unborn babies at risk. Now, the vigil was held here this evening in the light of the ongoing controversy surrounding the care given to the young woman who requested an abortion um, after she said that she was raped. Now, that, that lady earlier this month later had her baby delivered by caesarean section. The campaigners who gathered here this evening outside the Dáil said they were here to show solidarity to the mother and the baby at the centre of the case. We're here tonight simply to show our solidarity with the woman, with the baby, and to emphasise the fact that we said last year that if there was a move away from evidence-based medicine and abortion provision was going to be made on the basis of political say-so and the clout of abortion lobbies, that we were going to have difficult cases like this. And so we're asking the government that listened to the evidence last year and heard that there is no evidence that abortion is a treatment for suicidality to reverse that. Now, the speakers here tonight for the pro-life campaign were quite critical of the pro-choice movement. They said that um, people on the pro-choice side of the debate were manipulating the situation, the tragic case involving the young woman involved um, in this case and her baby. They said that they were manipulating the situation in order to have Ireland's abortion legislation expanded. It's quite obscene, really, that we have a baby clinging to life in a Dublin hospital this evening. And really all we've heard about from uh, pro-choice campaigners this week is a clamour for more and more abortion, a widening of our abortion laws. It's, it's really sickening. And what they should be looking for is a repeal of the legislation, which removed uh, evidence-based medicine for mother and baby. That's what we want in this country. And I understand, Sharon, further vigils are planned. Yes, there will be another pro-life vigil taking place in Dublin tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. That's taking place on O'Connell Street. Earlier in the afternoon at 2 p.m., there's going to be a pro-choice rally. Um, so that both, both events taking place tomorrow. The pro-choice side of the debate, they're calling for another abortion referendum. They want to see the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution repealed. So both events taking place in the city centre tomorrow. Now, earlier this week, the HSC announced that it was launching a review of the circumstances surrounding this case. What's the latest news on that? Well, the terms of reference for that inquiry have just been published this evening. The Health Service Executive has appointed a four-person review team. What they're going to be doing is establishing the facts, the chain of the communication um, in relation to the young woman at the centre of this latest case. They're not going to be looking at the clinical decisions um, made by the doctors in the hospital. What they're going to be doing is looking at the chain of communications from the time the young woman presented to the HSC back in April until her baby was delivered earlier this month. Now, the HSC say they want this review to be carried out as quickly as possible. We expect that it may be published sometime next month, perhaps towards the end of September, if it has full cooperation from all the parties involved in the case. Okay, Sharon Gaffney, thank you for that.